Don't feel like I'll be preaching too long this morning, but uh, God knows. If you have your Bibles and like to turn with me, I want to read a verse found uh, in the book of Romans. Then there's three or four verses after that I want to read too. But it says in Romans 5 and 1, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for the service up to this time and for this day. And God, for a country that thus far, we're still got the privilege and the opportunity to just meet anytime we want to, to worship Thee, have service. We thank you, God, for that. And trust, Lord, that we'll continue to be able to do that. Bless this message this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to use for a thought this morning on the word peace. Where is your peace or do you have peace? Uh, Webster, I looked up one time uh, what uh, peace meant as far as what Webster would say. And it pretty well would verify with the scriptures. It said that peace was calm or freedom from disturbance. And I sort of thought about it for a minute and I I got thinking, well, that's true because over in Mark in the fourth chapter, when the disciples was out in the uh, storm, Uh, or out on the ship and the storm came up and Jesus was asleep and they woke him and and said, Care us not that we perish. And Jesus stepped out on the bow and uh, the Bible said and there was a calm. But but prior to that, there was a great disturbance of the ship. So I took it that that was pretty accurate. Uh, peace being calm or freedom to disturbance. But the only way that a person is going to have real peace is and, and be able to enjoy it is when, we, was, is when we meet God's conditions. When we meet God's conditions. I want to read some verses here to you. It says in Romans 14 and 17, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and the joy of the Holy Ghost. How true that is. Uh, John 14, 27 says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto unto you. Uh, Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let it be afraid. And then in 1633, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. Now in the world you'll have tribulations, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And then one more says, The peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Uh, there's just a few things on my mind this morning in asking that question on where is your peace. I just want to tell you about some things where you cannot find peace. First of all, I want you to know that you cannot find peace uh, being disobedient uh, or running from God. You can't find it. Jonah (laughs) tried that, and it didn't work. God said, Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh and preach to them. Now, Jonah knew God well enough that if he would go and preach, as mean as they were and the kind of people that they were, if they would repent, God wouldn't destroy them. But instead of going and catching a ship to Nineveh, he got on board another ship and started towards Tarshish. 
But God caused a big storm to come up, and the ship was rocking so that it looked like that they was going to sink. And the other mariners that said that was on board, uh, everybody wanted them to pray to their God and to find out what's going on, in other words. As Frank says, what's going on? And so Jonah was downstairs in the bottom part of the ship asleep. But they told him to wake up and call upon his God. And he told them, what was going on? They asked him the question, you know, and he told them, he said, well, I'm a Hebrew. And he said, and I, I serve this God or this God that causes all this stuff. And he wanted them just to go ahead and throw him overboard. Well, they really didn't want to do that. And they tried to lighten the ship, but after a while they just decided they'd go ahead and do it. But God had prepared a large fish. We know it as a whale. As a matter of fact, the Bible even later on says, as Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and night, so must the Son of God be in the heart of the earth. So uh, scientists can tell me that Jonah wasn't in a whale all they want to because a whale couldn't do that. Well, God said the whale done it, so far as I'm concerned, it was a whale. But he was in there, and he ended up praying and sort of repenting a little bit, and the whale then vomited him out, and he went there. But the whole thing about it is, uh, my friend, he didn't have no peace when he decided to be disobedient unto God. And so I want you to know that uh, tonight or this morning, uh, that when God wants us to do something, uh, you might as well go ahead and do it from the start, because if you really serve in God, you won't have no peace till you do. You won't have no calmness in your life. Uh, you won't be free from disturbance until you say, Yes, Lord, I'll do it. You say, Well, I might fail. I might fall, I may stutter along the way. But I'd rather fall and stutter and fail trying to do something for God and have peace in my life. I tell you what, I've been to the point before in my life that I didn't have no peace. And that's not a very good feeling not to have that. Then I want you to know that there is another uh, reason uh, you can have no peace. And that's not serving the real God. There's people out there that says they're serving God, but they're not serving the real one. Do you remember back when Naomi and her husband uh, came from uh, where they were at there in, in Judah or Bethlehem? Because there was a famine there and they didn't have no food, so they went to Moab and they had two children and the children married a couple Moab girls and Finally, Amalek, he died, and the boys, they died. And finally, after a while, uh, Naomi heard that there was food back there, and so she decided she'd go. Oprah and Ruth was the two daughters. Now, she told them, she says, Girls, I don't have no more children. I'm not even, I don't even have a husband. I'm too old, and if I did, you wouldn't wait that long. You know, so Oprah decided she'd go back. But look what Ruth said. Ruth knew, uh, my friend, uh, loved Naomi. And she says, Entreat me not to leave thee, or follow him after me. Said, Where thou goest, I will go. Where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Your people can be my people, and here it is, your God, my God. Now Naomi, or not Naomi, but Oprah, went back to serving the old God, but not Ruth. Thank God for that. Because when I start reading the story of her, I find from her uh, the lineage of Christ came. Woo! Thank God for people that made that statement and wanted peace in their life and says, your God will be my God. I want a God like that. 
that can give you peace. Well, you'll not find no peace, uh, my friend, if you don't answer God when He calls you. How do you know? Well, there was a young man one time. First of all, his mother was named Hannah. She was barren, but she had prayed. And she got a child. And she said, I'll give him back to you, Lord, if you'll just let me have one. So she gave him to the priest there to work in the temple, Eli. Eli's children was meter and rattlesnakes. They just were just mean. And one time, uh, as Samuel got ready to go to bed, God called him. Said, Samuel? Samuel gets up and goes in there to Levi and said, Yeah, I'm here. What do you want? Levi said, I never said anything to you. And so he goes back and he lays down in bed. About that time, he hears that voice again. Says, Samuel? Samuel gets up, runs in, says, What do you want, Eli? He said, I don't want anything. The third time, he does the same thing. But this time, Eli recognized what's going on. And he says, the next time you hear that, you just say, Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth thee. So there he was, trying to get some sleep again. He hears that voice. Eli, or Samuel? Samuel said, Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth thee. And he said, I'm going to start something. And when I started, I'm going to finish it. But the bottom line was, Samuel couldn't get no peace and no rest until he answered God's call. Now, most preachers, I won't say every preacher, but most preachers, when God first starts, first starts calling them to preach, uh, they will run. They won't have that peace. I know. You know what my excuse was? Why, Lord, you've already got two of my brothers. You don't need me. You don't need me. And I'd like to tell this just a little bit. When I was a kid, we played church. You know, families used to do that. The kids would. They'd, we didn't go out and imitate Long Ranger or Zorro. Uh, but we would go in and we'd have church. A wash tub was my guitar. And I was always a preacher. And I always preached on Noah and the Ark. Noah and the Ark. I preached every time on Noah and the Ark. A little Catholic girl down the road one day said she was going to preach next Sunday. And I said, oh, no, you're not. God don't call women to preach. And I had enough sense to know that then. But anyway, that reminds me, I woke up one, uh, one day this week. And it was over in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 34. And it said, let the women keep silent in the churches. And... If they wanted to know anything, later later on said they would anything, let them ask their husband. Uh, and I asked Brother Melvin one time, I said, what well, if their husband ain't saved? He said, then they talk to the pastor. You know. But anyway, I about forgot where I was at. Where was I? Oh, we was playing church. And I was always the preacher. But the time came when God wanted me to preach. And I tried to, what they use the expression, run from it. But I didn't really run. I couldn't go nowhere. Finally, I surrendered. But I didn't have the real peace that I could have had until I surrendered to it. And then there's another one. And we'll close out on this one. There's no peace if you think you've lost the Lord. You say, what are you talking about, preacher? Jesus had went to Calvary. He'd already died. But he'd got up. And they was on the Emmaus Trail. And there was a couple guys just walking. They were so downhearted. Jesus come up on them. More or less than putting my own words. What's up? <laughs> What's happening? You know. They said, haven't you heard? They've crucified our Lord. They've crucified Him. He's dead. And they kept on talking. Finally they said, why don't you just uh, come on to supper? Well, Jesus was talking to them. And they finally said, 
go ahead and turn thanks. And when he began to break the bread, their hearts, they recognized who Jesus was and he just vanished out of them. I tell you what, they thought they had lost the Lord. People today, sometimes they'll say, I wonder, I wonder if they are a Lord. And they lose him, but they're not happy. They're not happy. You won't be happy until you know that you've got God in your life and you've got the Lord in your life and you've got the Holy Spirit in your life and you've got a, a church that's trying to live right and preach right. And that's called peace. This peace, he says, I give unto thee, not as the world giveth. Now you say, preacher, you mean you wouldn't be happy if for some reason... You go out there in the mailbox and you get a letter that's addressed to your wife from Publishing Clearing House. I mean, she's bought about everything they've had. <laughs> that you got so many thousand dollars a week. Sure, I'd be happy. I could find all kinds of ways to help her spend that. But I really honestly believe that if I would put that before God, my peace would leave. Right, Don't want that. If it was in her name, I, I couldn't force it because it would be checks. But I'd say, honey, make sure God gets his part. Make sure God gets his part. But aren't you glad today that you can be as poor as a whippoorwill and still have peace? You can have peace. You don't have to be rich to have it. You know, everybody most generally starts out the same way. Oh, I remember Dad talking to me when I first got married and, or when I was ta first got engaged and was going to get married. And, buddy, I said... <laughs> I'm having my furniture paid for. You know, I wasn't going to be in debt because poor old dad and mom was in debt all their life. Seemed like that's all they did to struggle to make ends meet. I wasn't going to be like that. I borrowed my first I borrowed my first thousand from City Loan. Bought my furniture, you know. But after, you know, after so many years, you finally get something paid for. It's not broke yet, you know. Time goes on. But I tell you what. If you didn't have nothing and you've got the Lord, you've got it all. You've got it all. You've got it all. Let's stand to our feet today.